This next episode covers the Naughty Tech Catamarans. The ones I've got here at Grandma are the 40 Open and the 46 Fly. Again, it's the first Catamarans to come out of the Bavaria stable under the newly branded Naughty Tech. So let's go and take a look. So let's start by taking a look at the Nautitech 46 Fly. The flybridge is huge and adds a lot of height to the catamaran. However, the visibility is absolutely amazing from this vantage point. It has both a helm area and a separate lounging area. But from the point of view of helm position, let's take a look and listen to what Teresa has to say. So the visibility is obviously visibility is unparalleled from yeah, up yeah. here. Absolutely um, amazing there's visibility. no doubt about that. And it's a really great space actually. You've got a whole kind of cockpit situation behind yeah. us. Um, I like it. Yeah, absolutely. I do like it. I do I like it as well. I mean, I don't know how practical it would be for crossing oceans. I think during the day when the weather was nice, it would be quite pleasant. I'm assuming that there's a planet that it comes down here. But... Yeah, they're, they're, this would be fully enclosed, so you would be completely protected from the elements. You can ask for yourself, I suppose. Yeah, excuse me. This has sides that come down, right? Uh, like covers? Yeah, like the no, wind pan. We, you can add the the the, the, the factory yep. didn't. Uh, okay. But you can add it with, with, with windows. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Okay. I like it. I like it as well. Uh, well I like. From the helm position, the controls and all your instruments are well laid out and easy to see. Line handling is fairly straightforward and the visibility is unparalleled up here. So this is, yeah, the um, kind of cockpit area of the fly. And uh, it's extremely comfortable. It's very cool up here because you get that breeze uh, that you wouldn't get in the cockpit because you would have the obstruction of the, the doors in the saloon and everything. So the cockpit on a catamaran can, can become quite um, airless and therefore quite warm. Um, however, this obviously obviates that completely because you've got the secondary uh, cockpits area and it's very, very cool, um, huge bimini area and you could put a whole enclosure up here uh, for, I guess, if you were in really bad weather and you needed to be up here if you were underway. But you, can, you can handle everything from up here, all the lines lead back to the helming position um, and yeah. It's really nice. You, you prefer the, the open or the fly? For circuit for going around the world, yes. we need a we need an open. Another. I like the fly, but yeah. you know, mid Pacific, you know, in a, in a storm, you don't yeah, want to yeah. be out there. We, we, we sell this uh, this uh, the fly. We sell it especially for the shutter. Yeah, I, I can see why. I mean, they're beautiful boats. So, so we looked at all the we spent last night looking at all the information yep. on this. So okay. they are good boats. So as you can hear from our lovely broker, the fly is really geared up to the charter market. So onto the open, there are some fantastic and very well protected outward and outboard helm stations here. Um, I'm pretty happy with these, they're well protected. Oh. You can have the rigid star of the... It's well protected. Yeah. Has pretty good visibility, of course. That's one of the advantages of having the helm position here, is that you can see all the way down. And this, in this case, the starboard uh, hull. And for manoeuvring, close cabin manoeuvring, it's ideal because you're right up next, next again against whatever it is that you're docking against. So in that respect, it's really good. Um, you can get like a little bimini uh, for the helming stations, which will obviously provide some protection against the elements. So we have good forward visibility. We've got some good attachment points here. And although I'm not a fan of the completely outboard helm stations, they feel safe and protected. So they've got good handles here to step up to the side deck. And they have a really good uh, gutter here. I think that would be partly to, protect, uh, to collect rainwater, maybe. But it's definitely for um, the handhold. That's good. Really wide side decks to walk down. So although the gutters or handholds are slightly deeper than the lagoon and offer more grip, I would still like to see rails throughout just to aid movement around the deck in heavy weather. Movement around the boat is easy and well thought out. However, the bugbear I have with all these boats is that the life raft was not visible and therefore we can only assume it was placed and is normally kept in a locker. This is not good practice. 
with a lack of a visible and easily accessible life raft and those slightly exposed helms, we're going to award this a 6 out of 10. So in this category, what do we always do first? We get into the engine bay to have a really good look at how everything is fitted out. The steering mechanism is well constructed. There are rose joints, good flanges, and everything is well braced. I am very happy with this. The engine bay is huge. There is good access to just about every area of the bay, although we didn't see any self-expanding foam in the conduits. The gooseneck was very well built, and interestingly, these were tapped rather than riveted on. It is not something we often see on either monohulls or catamarans. The stainless steelwork was overbuilt and very, very strong. And one thing we very rarely see, dovetail joints in all the drawers. All the drawer facings and inserts were wooden. The Corian was of good quality. And look at this. This is good quality finishing. Nice rounded joints and an attention to detail that we were really pleased with. The corners of the cabinetry were rounded throughout and we saw no real sharp edges anywhere within either the saloon or the hulls. Well done Naughty Tech, we are going to award this an 8 out of 10. Come on you. Okay. Stop, stop flirting with the boat. <laughs> Let's first take a look at the cockpit of the Naughty Tech. I think the cockpit is a really sensibly laid out space. It's quite stylish and of course, as per usual with these catamarans, there is plenty of room for all of your friends, no matter how many of them you happen to have. Particularly in the Flybridge version, you've got this upstairs cockpit as well, which I have to say is just fabulous. The galley in the 46 was U-shaped and it also faced forward, which is a little bit unusual. I personally really liked it. You've got fantastic panoramic views throughout the saloon and galley area and good ventilation. Galley, dining area, so storage, this one, storage too. Oh, I see, there's a latch. Yeah. Okay, that's good. such a short moment that so many miles. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's nice. The latch is nice because it just makes it look cleaner. It's cleaner. Yeah. So this is the galley and saloon area. Um, a couple of features that I wanted to point out. Really good ventilation and you've got this U-shaped galley which is good for when you're underway. It provides good protection for whoever's in the galley. Um, and you've got a double sink which I know is important for when you're living aboard. A lot of people get really fixated on the double sink situation. And you've also uh, got uh, two different seating areas. And in the open version, you also had really good view of the sails from inside. On the day, they only had a four cabin version to show us, so let's go and take a look at one of the hulls. One in half and one in the front. Yep. Opening hatches, that's fine. Let me just get my tape measure out. <laughs> and you then you have a lot, lot of storage. Yep, I like dressing. Yep, okay. You have all along the, the bed. Uh huh, yeah, 160. That's okay. By what? 160. 160 by 200. Okay, so a little that's bit wide, a little bit wider than ours. Uh -huh. yep. yep, that's good. Oh, look, this is good. I like things like this. This is open. This is, the wood is better quality. Yeah, it's nice. And here you have like the one toilet. Yeah. One. Okay, so they share the. You have yeah. like a big shower. Yeah. For both cabins. That's perfect. But you have also like the possibility to have a shower in uh -huh. each toilet. Yeah. So you yeah. have three <laughs> showers. Okay, that's good. It's pretty, uh, and then here yeah, you have like uh, washing okay. machines. Yep. So uh -huh. good. And also look at the other one on this. Yeah. But I like and this joinery is well faced. Yeah. Okay. So here the cabin okay. is more tight yep. than the other one. Yep. But you have uh, Still good size. the same like storage, yep. like dressing everywhere. Yep. For shoes. Okay. And 
big one and the other side. Perfect. You have a, a good mattress, like uh, memorize uh, the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Memorize Great. And you have an old cabins like this. Yep. Or for the mosquito. Yes. You can adjust. Yes. If you want to. Very good. I really like the aesthetic, the interior design and the styling of the Naughty Tex, so we're giving it a 7 out of 10. So let's look at some statistics and performance for the Naughty Tech 46. It weighs in at 13.79 meters, but the waterline is also 13.71, so really, really plumb at the bows. The beam is 7.54 meters or 24 feet. She does, of course, have stub kills, so draws 1.45 meters with unskeg propellers. You have 120 square meters of sail area, but the interesting thing here is the displacement. This boat comes in at 10,800 kilograms. The Lagoon 42 weighs 12,000 and the Leopard 45 14,000. It's a light boat and the polar diagram shows this. This boat will fly. She is light to medium displacement and as such is more performance oriented than any of the other production catamarans. So we are going to award the Naughty Tex a six for performance. It is a light boat and she should fly. So in our final category, we are going to discuss value for money. The Naughty Tech 46, the base price is 430,000 euros. That's 490,000 US dollars or 385,000 pounds. However, we normally add a hundred thousand to the final price for extras to get this up to a blue water standard. However, it should be noted that some of the extras on this boat were significantly cheaper than extras we've seen on other catamarans we've already reviewed in this series. For instance, the generator, while it is very, very slightly smaller in capacity, it is 10,000 euros cheaper than, say, for instance, the Fontaine Pajot. So if you are specking a boat from you, please look at the extras. They vary wildly in prices. Value for money here, we're going to give this boat a 6 out of 10. So that was the Naughty Tech 46 Fly. Now the Naughty Tech 40 Open was also there and from looking at the two boats, the 46 is available in either the Open version or the Fly version. So we kind of did a little bit of hybrid video there, reviewing the Fly but looking at the cockpit from the Open. Um, and so that's, that's why you'll see some shots of uh, the, the, the Open. Yeah. Um, but yes, we looked at the interior of the fly and there are some subtle differences. So that's the first disclaimer that uh, the, the, the open version is not the 46, but the 40. Yes. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts? I really liked it. I really liked it. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Naughty Tex because, or at least the new ones, because I've always thought that they look, their lines are quite nice, not the flybridge, because the flybridge kind of ruins that, but the open, the lines are, in my opinion, really lovely. So I've always looked at them kind of at an anchorage or whatever and thought, that's a pretty catamaran. Um, we've not been on board many, if any, actually. And We've been on board uh, the 54. Oh yeah, well, yeah, that's not, not something that we're looking at for ourselves but point being is that I, I I've always suspected that they're a nice catamaran and they are I I liked the 46 a lot I thought that uh, I mean the flybridge I have to admit appealed greatly mm -hmm. but I think that as we discussed in you know, on the day the practicality while underway on a nice day is all very well and good but when you're underway sitting up there in even kind of just bumpy or rolly weather it wouldn't be pleasant no. let alone anything that was rough no. and before people comment yes i know that you know there's other youtube channels they've got fly bridges they go sailing in the southern ocean etc etc and you know i have nothing but respect for them but it's just not for us we want to be as comfortable as possible while underway and as safe as possible and i can't imagine i always think how would it be on a night watch when it's just the two of us double handing and how would we arrange ourselves? How, how would I feel with Nick on watch at that kind of helming position? 
and I just can't imagine being able to sleep well knowing that you were like two stories up. Okay. Yes, you're correct in everything you just said. Um, a Maori, so who was the rep that showed us yeah. that, he actually said, and he, we called it on video, that the fly is really built for the charter market. Yeah. And I would say that if I just wanted a charter or I wanted a, a vessel to go bobbing around the Caribbean, yeah. sailing around the Caribbean, that ticks almost every box yeah. for me. So it's I really liked it. Yeah. I really liked it. And I think, you know, we are looking for a boat for a very specific reason, and that's yeah. to go and do long ocean crosses and live remotely. Mm. That boat, even by the broker's uh, assessment, is not meant for that. The, the fly bridge. The fly. Yeah. Um, however, you can get it in the open, and I think the interior is about the same. So yeah. the fly is not for us, although it has the best lounging area. So good. Of I, any I, boat. Nick had to almost drag me down from there. Yeah, yeah. I, I was ready to settle in yeah. for the day. So, you know the it, it's it's fantastic yeah it's absolutely fantastic so yeah. that's the first thing and it gives you all the benefit of the forward cockpit without having a forward cockpit because it's got even more air up yeah. there so that's good and such good views you can imagine in a beautiful anchorage yeah oh, amazing I, it would be so good so fairly safe from what we can see yeah. for, for if that's what you're doing with it yeah. okay so now on to the open um the open is what we would be looking at if we would wanted to do something kind of offshore i personally although the helm positions of that open feel safe. There's a lot of fiberglass around them. They are very exposed. Mm. They are very exposed. From the point of view of the elements, you know, it's 40 something degrees. It's just hit over 100 and something in this boat this afternoon. And being out in the sun in heat like that, you don't want to be there. You don't want to be on night. I wouldn't want to be on long night watches there. That's something I just wouldn't want. Yeah. The other thing is that the most comfortable part of the boat is at its center, that its pivotal center, whether that's uh, yawing or, or mm. in swell. And if you are if you are in a catamaran that is seven meters across and you're at both ends, if the boat is going up and down like that, you are getting the full seesaw effect. Mm. It's the same, you know, we said about the fly. The higher up you are, the, the, the greater the pendulum motion. Mm, That's mm. just the way it works. Mm. I know you can get little covers for them. Yeah, but it's, it just, it's just a little bimini. It is just a little bimini. Yeah. But, you know, other manufacturers deal with a little bimini. Um, I think they're too exposed for what we would want to do. Other manufacturers, um, Uchimer, for instance, they've got those out outriggers, mm. um, sort of the outboard helm seats. Mm. Um, but they've also got an, uh, a central helm station. Yeah. Um, and I know Katana also have just the outside outboard. Yeah. Um, and the argument is, well, hang on a minute. When you're crossing oceans, you're doing everything underwater pilot. Yeah. Um, and and the other argument is, you know, when you're docking, then it is nice yeah. to have like to be right there yeah. against whatever it is that you're parking against. I think that most uh, we know cruisers who have catamarans with the same homing position. Um, we have a couple of Katana owners who are, are friends and this is something that we've asked them about and the feedback that we've gotten is basically yeah it's not ideal but we put up with it. Like yeah. no one at any point, none of our, we've got three couples who are um, friends of ours who own Katanas and none of them have ever said oh it, it's just the best I love it. They've all been like well it's basically the compromise that we made for this boat was those helm positions. Yeah. So I really wish that manufacturers would think about what they're doing what people are doing with these boats because those outboard outboard helm positions they're, they're nice for a bit. Th they're fine if you're just sailing for like three hours and then that's it but when you're three weeks three weeks I mean why and not only that but when you're living on the boat and it's you're doing it all the time, then the novelty of kind of being out there with the wind in your hair, believe me, soon wears off. So yeah, I'm frustrated, I'm, as you can hear, because I really wish that the Norte Tech uh, came in, I think it's called like a sports helm position, like, you know, what basically... Maybe they'll listen, maybe that's what they'll do. Yeah. Okay, so look, listen, uh, we've said that completely uh, outboard helm stations are not for us. Um, we have got the Sea Wind video, which I think that deals with that almost perfectly. Yeah. It brings them halfway in, yeah. and that is a good idea. So yeah. that is innovation, and yeah. I think that if more manufacturers looked at that and said, well, you can still get the visibility and the protection, maybe things will change, yeah. maybe things will evolve. So from an exterior point of view, that's that. That's that. Mm. Nice cockpit space. Interiorly, um, I'll let you talk about that in a minute. All I would say is that I'm a bit of a joinery nerd, and the joinery on this boat was very, very good. Not that many sharp edges. Yeah. Uh, not it, it well rounded, well matched. It looked good. Real wood 
in areas which are high traffic that you know where you've got like corners of stairs yeah where you've got corners of cupboards corners of tables they need to be rounded but also made of real wood because veneer will chip and mm. split within a season yeah especially in a humid environment yeah. um so that was good what do you think well i i really like the interior i thought it was really stylish i thought the layout i think um they actually are changing up the layout in for future models but anyway we'll stick to what we've filmed uh, I really like the forward facing galley. Um, I think that the the U shaped galley was great. It obviously is a nod to the fact that it's a performance catamaran and there might be a little bit of movement when you're kind of, you know, racing along at how many knots? What's the maximum speed? Um, the polar diagram is back in the video. Um, okay. um, all I would say is that this is a 46, it is four tons lighter than yeah. the Leopard 45. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking 14 tonnes, 10 tonnes. Yeah. You know, that's literally, it, 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 it's 33% less weight, <laughs> 25. Anyway. Whatever, it's light. It's, it's definitely a performance cat. Well, it, it, I guess the Leopard 45 is 33% heavier than this boat. So the Nautitech will give you some decent speeds. And for that reason, things might be a little bit bouncy inside. And they have dealt with that with the U-shaped galley, which I appreciate. Um, but they had just a lot of nice aesthetic touches. Yeah, I like I, I, anyway, I won't go on because aesthetics is a, is a subjective thing, but I personally really liked the interior. I did as well. I think um, other things that um, are to note, either, it's actually price for price. It's actually quite good value for money. Yeah. You know, for instance, their generator, I think it's an Onan or whatever it is, it's eight, uh, so it's 20,000 euros. Yeah. When you think 20,000. But... Fontaine Pajot wants 30,000 euros yeah. for it. So a lot of their extras I looked at and I thought, actually, what, you know, they're not striping it. Mm. Um, it's Bavaria, Bavaria, you know, have had a mixed reputation over the last 20 years. Older, but, you know, it goes up and down depending on really the economy and how much the accountants are playing with the company mm. and telling them to strip, strip costs out. Mm. This, I thought, was good. Yeah. I did think it was good. And I think, you know what, if we were looking for a catamaran to just do the Caribbean, the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, all that, that, that would tick every box. And our friends that have done this, circumnavigating it, I love it. They're, and they're 54. They're, yeah, they're not take, yeah. So I'm pretty pleased with it. Um... There are, what are about the downs? Just those o open helms and you know, it's, it's when we come across boats like this. The Katanas I, I do like um, and it should be noted that the Nautitech, despite being a performance oriented catamaran, doesn't have dagger boards so the performance is not going to be as good as a Katana. But um, yeah, I just wish that I could get my head around those, those helm positions. Well, I wish that it kind of made sense to me that those home positions but they just don't and well, I, the, I don't know if I can get past that. The example we could give is we've got twin wheels we never use them. Well this is actually I was thinking that before we have exposed helms and twin yeah twin helms and we don't use them but they're always in shade and we've got sides that pull down that completely enclose us. Yeah and when we're on watch in the middle of the night by ourselves we're able just to stand up and take two coffee. steps and and we're at the helm whereas on a Nautitech 46 an open version let's say you're inside on watch or you're sitting in the cockpit on watch and then you have to go to the helm you know that is taking a risk having I mean you'd clip on you'd have like um what are they called the, the tethers yeah but the the lines that you could tether to like the jack lines yeah jack lines so you, you would you know put those up and you could make it safe. You could definitely oh, yeah, make it, it safe. safe. Yeah. Okay, so look, helm position, there's not a lot we can say about that. Yeah, you know, we've you, got a lot about You know it. what you're getting. Yeah. Um, the other thing which is um, an issue I have with a lot of these is life raft position. Yeah. So far, the only, you know, these life rafts need to be, as I, keep, I said in the last video, in the, uh, the leopard video, you've got to be able to deploy that life raft in 30 seconds and in a locker, it's just not going to work for me. Yeah. Um, easy fix, you move it, move it somewhere else, move yep. it to an easily accessible area. Um, so apart from that, you know, apart from those two gripes, there's not a lot I can fault with this boat. It's not for us, I would say that, but it is, I can see it offers a lot of appeal and better value for money than other comparative production catamarans. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, well, thanks for watching that. That was the Naughty Tech 46 stroke 40 um, review. We will be back in a couple of weeks with another review. We've still got Privilege, we've got uh, Uchimer to do, of course. Mm. We've got the Neil 47 at some point, which is going to be an interesting much, one. Much uh, requested. Yeah, much review. requested. So look forward to that. So we'll be back soon, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.